Welcome back to another video about StarCraft II review and feedback. This one I found, uh, it's been out for a few days, um, but I uh, found it on all things Zerg, and uh, I eventually made it to the original post on uh, reddit.com backslash r and subreddit, whatever, of StarCraft. Um, this is uh, supposedly a very intense game. It's rather um, big uh, with regards to what I'm looking at in the graphs. Uh, for values and the such. So um, before we get too far into it, I hope you enjoy. And I want to make sure that we're all going to be ready to rock with this. And, uh, well, here we go. That was a little preview if you snuck it in there. On the red, we have Asunder. On the bottom right-hand corner, as Zerg. And as I said, it is a ZVC. In the upper left-hand corner, we have Blue with Mr. Lockett. Um, as you saw with the timer, it's a bit longer game. What you want to do in a ZVZ is you want to pay attention to the, use, the unit composition counts. Um, so specifically, how many workers does each person have, and at what time do they build the things that they're building. So for the blue player here, what they've done is they have gone pool first, um, which means that they have three workers under construction at the same time, but a very, very fast pool. So one base built, it's very aggressive. Um, it also allows for you to do um, a lot of shenaniganry around being with that aggression. Um, and generally speaking, the game is either gonna end very early or you're gonna do a lot of damage and be far ahead, or it completely falls on its face. Red on the other side is built their pool a little bit later. Um, they just started it at their 16th worker, uh, as well as a gas. This is a 16-16 build order. So when you hear a 12 pool, you, this is what you're looking at. When you hear a 16-16, this is what you're looking at. Also, I would have kept these mining on the minerals. That's a slight mistake. This Evo chamber block is hilarious. This is going to slow down the income uh, for getting gas for our blue Zerg here. Um, the reason that that's important is because that slowdown is to prevent um, gas collection to reduce the timing for speed. So blue is going to go ahead and jump out of their base and run across the map. But red sent out a drone very, very early to scout. Another one of the builds that you'll see that is in ZVZ or in any Z build is like a 17, 16, uh, 17 or something along those lines. Um, there's an 18 build where you start with a hatchery. Um, ex uh, for your spawning pool, right? There's a lot of different builds that are out there. So, um, this is this is just the aggression coming in. The important part is is you either need to kill this base here or kill workers um, as the blue player. If you do not do a either of those two things, you are actually behind. Um, other things that can actually uh, help a lot is reducing your uh, opponent's uh, mining time. So, for example, all these workers chasing after that ling is bad. With the exception, of course, that they were doing that initially, um, and then they returned to work almost immediately. Got to get yourself back into gas. Make sure that if you want to go into a uh, layer very quickly, otherwise this is what you want to do. You want to have uh, all your workers in minerals. 18 is the correct number. Uh, this is the maximum efficiency, assuming each one of your workers are hitting the long distance patch for the three, and then the close distance patches are all two. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then these are the two long distance one, this one here, and this one here. This can sometimes be considered long distance. It just depends on measure and stuff like that. Uh, it gets it gets really nuancy when you get to like GM level. If you really care to maximize the absolute utterly highest level, which is where you're going to have tournament play. Um, blue on the back side of this expanded and got a, f a pair of queens, which is are actually just a queen, excuse me, one queen for both players. What they're doing is they're basically setting themselves up to have the units to be able to be aggressive. Their slowdown on the opponent's speed is paid in dividends, making it so that blue has to run away. If you look right now, what's going to happen is red uh, it should be ahead in workers or about even. And they're actually even dead, dead, and dead. Uh, both have 19... Um, Workers and uh, 18 um, units. The difference is red has speed. So red can just run by, and if you wall off, which red has done, uh, can run by the other side of the map and just kill a queen, kill a pair of queens, kill some workers, do a lot of uh, damage. 
That being said, that advantage evaporates as soon as speed shows up and the army is present, which Blue did a good job of pulling back. So these two players are just kind of pushing each other's buttons, trying to see which one has the advantage, uh, see how far off each, one are, each other is. Creep is uh, questionable, but also useful in ZVZ. The reason you want creep is because queens can't transfuse off of it, one. Two, it makes your units look, go faster, So, um, but it also makes your opponent's units go faster. Third, it gives you vision, so you have a slight advantage of knowing when all these lings are showing up and you have a good idea of how many before the combat begins. You can see even pulling off workers just to try and fight these number of lings because there's so many they don't want to lose the game right away. Obviously, because we've uh, watched, we, we've seen the intro portion, we know uh, that this game does not end at 4 minutes and 40 seconds with all those workers uh, getting in combat. I don't even think there was that many that were lost. Um, that was actually very impressive. There's army supply. Um, I think this is, no. Is there a control R? There you go. Very few workers killed on both sides, both losing a, the same number of lings. Uh, it might have been a queen. No, nope, all, all lings, I think, uh, was the lost count. Maybe one queen for blue here. I would have to do the math. Uh, next st uh, stage of the game is Roach Ravenger. Um, what you end up doing is you wall yourself in. Uh, not a full wall, usually. You usually use your queens um, or like a spine crawler or something as a, a doorway similar to a Terran build. And you're going to transition um, so that you can control the bases. The alternative option to that is going Muta. Um, if you go Muta, which is not a bad choice, you have to be aware that your opponent might go Spore. Uh, their spine, there's no spore here, but those queens are going to make it so it's really hard to do a lot of damage. Sorry, I did not mean to click all that. Um, the queens make it so it's hard to do a lot of damage unless you have a sufficient number, and your opponent, generally speaking, is going to know you're going that uh, build um, before you actually get there. This is 100% a scout, or sorry, is trying to do some damage, kill all the rest of these uh, zerglings that are around. You can see the pull of all of the uh, workers to try and slow them down. No injects on the main, which is a, a loss. You can see both players floating quite a bit of resources, but both players doing a really good job of fighting each other. Um, so there's nothing really crazy here other than there was no injects on the main on this base. Um, but on the opposing side of the map, the uh, red player is not injecting as well. So it's a very, very, very balanced game. Other than um, the slight advantages of uh, each player having Roach, Ravenger, or Speed first, and then the transition that we were work they were working on between that. Red has obviously identified this is going to be a Roach Ravenger game um, and has decided to do their best to try and catch back up in that ra that area versus trying to go Muta or something like that. So you would look at uh, buildings to see if they're going to kind of chase that that, that uh, thought. And of course, Blue has a layer already because they want that speed. But Red does not. Um, it is almost done because, uh, whoa, double Roach. Okay, there's an Evo Chamber. There's another Evo Chamber. That's fine. Not a big deal. Roach Warn. Did I see another Roach Warn? Yeah, there's another Roach Warn. That's a mistake. That's 150 minerals that uh, you're not going to get back. Um, but if you put it in the wall and the wall goes down, uh, you don't you don't get into a situation where you can't produce roaches, which is uh, not a bad thing. Um, having your third base is very important to be in the advantage eventually. We have a 43 to 38 worker count. 49 to 38 worker count difference now. Um... Which is okay. It's just something that you have to be aware of that if your opponent has a third base and you do not, you're going to slowly, uh, if not very quickly, fall behind. So you either have to be decisive and destroy your opponent's base. That's what this speed is all about. Ravengers coming out, having a bunch of lings, having a big army ready to defend and uh, head across the map very quickly. Um, if blue takes his army and heads across the map, that red army is going to try and sneak in and get as much damage as they can to end the game because that's what you do. Um, Overseer coming in, slowing down the creep spread, a little bit of it. Uh, blue pulls entirely back versus sending some across the map. Red, on the other side of the map, has now gotten some roaches. So the only advantage that we're going to see uh, between the two players are upgrades. And we have missile attack for blue because he had intended to transition. And melee attack, uh, in speed, excuse me, versus melee attack for red, who did not intend to transition at the timing of that uh, when this occurred what they're pursuing their opponent and that's what they've been doing all game sorry my work phone is going off and uh it's not useful um it's just uh spam hey do you have this discount nope i don't want that discount for that thing that i don't use called makeup 
Uh, spine crawlers are kind of useful. They're pr pretty tanky. Uh, you want to try and dodge the biles instead of eating them. That's a very expensive take uh, because you're going to lose value, uh, pound to pound, value to value, a lot of um, resources when you get hit by biles. It's a single cast. It takes a moment. You just need to step out of the way. Um, obviously, nobody's perfect. So if you don't, if you do make those mistakes, don't worry too bad. Just something to be aware of. Red is continuing to build spines, just giving himself a little bit of time to kill, to do extra damage and slow down his opponent when they decide to come in. Um, at this moment, Red is floating so many resources. If I were them, I would drop a spire. I'd be like spire, and then I would try and uh, keep myself in in a close match with this roach war, uh, roach army, because at this point you know, at, you should know or have a good idea that you've been ahead of your opponent um, for a long period of this game. Also, which, that's kind of weird. I don't know what these drones are all doing. Um, but you should know that you're very, very ahead economically. Uh, and you want to be able to maximize that lead. Uh, sorry, that was... Sorry. Here. Um, and there, he's using the spines effectively to defend himself from this gigantic ball of roaches. Using the defender's advantage to, take, uh, to try and do his best to hold his opponent there. Again, I don't know why all those workers went across the map. That was kind of weird. There's so many of them coming across. Um, that might transition into something absolutely crazy. Ooh, Overlord's almost going down, which is super important for Roach builds. The reason being is, is that they're so supply intense for their cost. Uh, so you're going to have a much bigger uh, need for that supply as you fight. Um, Blue doing a good job of spreading, spreading himself out, so that way he's hitting multiple places, making sure he's getting as many units as he can. Uh, Red, unfortunately, threw away a bunch of workers. I think it was just a fat mi misclick or like uh, something along those lines. One roach left from blue on the other side of the map. Red has a decent army but loses his uh, third base. Blue, on the other hand, has established his third base but has not started mining it very much. These two workers are the first two. Going to reestablish creep probably, question mark. Um, Overseer getting pushed back. Army sizes are comparable with Red being in the lead. This is kind of where you want to be, uh, other than the oversaturation, which is car starting to happen here. The There it is. I see they've already fixed it. Look, as I call it out, they're heading right there. Golly, I know. You got, like, that's so good. Um, I didn't expect that to happen. Um, big old roach ball getting ready to head across the map. Uh, with these weaker roaches, I mean, there's, like, this guy right here that has 40 health. It's uh, less than one-third of his full health. You can build it into a Revenger, and it'll go to full health. So something to kind of think about with regards to your worker, your army composition, and how you want to manage it going across the the uh, map. Um, I don't know if Red should have taken that fight. There's the queen, the Ravengers behind Queens with it too. Uh, that's a very scary army to fight if you're just pure Roach that uh, doesn't overwhelming have an overwhelming support um, against his opponent. Both players have a little bit of a floating resource uh, issue. Red in particular, he wanted that third base and ended up losing it, unfortunately. Um, and doesn't have the creep to make it so these queens are going to get back to where they're supposed to be really fast, but works out well. Already has an inject flooding. Oh my goodness. Uh, no injects on the main yet again. Um, depending on how good you are, you might want to like float that queen going back and uh, forth to support over here, and then run back in, grab that. Or, like what I like to do, is I'll just park a queen here and not even think about it. I'll just say forget it. Like this guy, this player, uh, Asunder, the red zerg here, has decided to queue his queens in and is hitting them all with injects across all of them with the queen count versus like manually specifically holding it and all that kind of stuff. In the process of getting to plus two attack weapons, which is really big, uh, versus opponent who only has one and has armor already. So red's uh, pound for pound army is going to do much better with regards to the straight up engagements, but when you have those biles coming in and things like that, what and what ends up happening is uh, Red will have to think about um, what fight he wants to take, simply because he could put himself in a, uh, just simply behind by walking into a bile or being making a slight miscalculation on the army sizes and things because he doesn't have the appropriate units to deal with it. Uh, roaches have a unique ability where they have this called, thing called rapid regeneration. Basically, if it's burrowed, it, goes, it heals way, 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 way faster, which is a really cool concept. Um, I really like it. You don't see it as much as I'd like to have see. I'd like to see it in games, um, unless it's AI, which then they maximize everything to some 
exponential theoretical maximum we're getting close to in some cases. Um, so Red has a slight oversaturation problem in his natural. Otherwise, it's okay. We're going to go to the fight. Sorry. Um, looking, looking like the concave... Uh, the, the line where both players are fighting. So concave is when you have the, like this hand that's being bent back is going to be in the disadvantage and this hand on, that's bending over. This is the concave. This is the convex. Concave is what you want. Convex is how you lose unless you have just an absolute monster army in comparison to your opponent. So what you want to do is you want to keep positioning to see if you can get yourself to get that cup so that your opponent has to fight into it and you can... Uh, have more units shooting at the same time uh, over your, what your opponent's doing. <clears throat> Fourth base is being established by blue and red. A little difference in timing, but not too terrible. Worker count is very clearly in blue's advantage, even though red attempted to do so much earlier in the game. Uh, blue happened to hit a really nice timing and do uh, was able to take on this hatchery, which um, took away any advantage he had at that point. Uh, both players are kind of looking at each other sternly. They have uh, overlords across the map kind of seeing what's going on. Overseer flying through, just checking out what's going on. Army's getting ready to move together. We're going to slide back down. Um, this is a good catch out if you can do a lot of damage here. Uh, but you might get surrounded, Mr. Red. Be careful. Um, and then they have the high ground, too. This is uh, very, very, very scary for Red. They were just in a, a really awkward spot. Uh, oop, does a really good job with his Biles, dodging the other players. Biles has another contingency of roaches underneath his overlords. That's about, uh, what, 12, 20? Yeah, it's a lot. Um, pulls back and continue to engage back and forth, back and forth. Ravenger count is much, much higher for blue. Um, unfortunately for blue, red is being very, very good about their control and isn't really losing a ton of workers to the piles. Uh, oop, there's a sandwich. That was uh, another way to get a uh, advantage upon your opponent with your facing um, each other is that you have two sides, you're, you're hitting them on two fronts, right? Um, they're in the middle, you're going, and you're getting them on both sides, which is really, really hard. Uh, you're going to take a lot of damage and most likely um, lose that army or a large portion of that army, which you just saw almost perfectly going on. Overlords get sniped with, I believe, three or four biles. I cannot remember. I think that was just three, so it's, it must be four. Um, and you just have to put it right where this little spot is. Do you see how there's this line underneath? That specific location is telling you where it is in that's um, because the, that's where the damage comes through. Um, what's with uh, it flying and through the air and all that good stuff. Red has decided to sacrifice these workers, or not workers, this army. Um, it appears, maybe trying to get out of the ramp here, get some high value kills. If you're going to get in this kind of situation, what you want to do is you want to fo fight focus down the expensive units in comparison. Roaches are relatively inexpensive. Uh, I have to click on an egg to actually give you the exact costs. Um, God, he's just too fast. Um, there we go. It is 75.25. Um, and a Ravenger requires an upgrade uh, of another 25.75. So it's 100-100 versus 75.25 when you kill a Ravenger. So what you do is you, if you get in a tight spot where your army gets concaved or squished, or you're going to lose it and you know you're going to lose it and you have no choice, what you do is you try and focus down those higher value units, specifically the Ravengers in this instance. Um, the reason being is because those, that higher value um, unit is going to be, obviously, it's more expensive. And uh, every time they lose those units, they're that much farther behind uh, in comparison to your worker count, value, army, composition, whatever, however you want to uh, define it. Um, very close game. Uh, the only thing I would say is... Uh, be careful. This could be considered uh, BM. So try try and not do that. Uh, I, I historically speaking have done that a few times. So I'm not I'm not blameless in this. I'm just simply saying like one of the things to try and think about is that uh, if you're the person that you're playing against, that you're the one that's deciding when you quit if the game is over or not. Maybe you have some something up your sleeve or whatever. Um, and you're able to do something crazy where, like, a muta ball shows up and kills a bunch of these roaches and ravengers. In addition to that, because of things like that, some people will stay in the game until you kill every building. Um, because they just are like, fine, if you want to be nasty, I'm going to just go get a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, whatever it is, and you need to just kill me. And they're going to waste your time making it so that your feel-good moments, um, you just 
don't keep that same level of intensity for your next match. Uh, so don't, just try not to BM it. It's, it. At the end of the day, BM is okay as long as it's in jest, uh, not if you're trying to tilt your opponent. Um, and that's the end of that game. So let's jump all the way back. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, the good. Both players had a great build order as they followed standard builds that professionals have uh, honed over years and years and years. Did a lot of really cool things with regards to making sure that they defended properly. They microed very well with regards to their lings. ZVZ kind of requires it. It's one of the reasons I don't main Zerg. I cannot Zerg versus uh, Zergling versus Zergling. And I do not like going straight into Roaches, um, which is where you wall off the natural um, and go Muta or something like that because it gets countered. People know how to deal with it. Um, it's also like, yeah, point being is, is both players did a really good job of controlling their units during the intense moments. Um, upgrades uh, were definitely an advantage to the blue player for um, most of the game. Um, so you just need to be... Uh, uh, when you have those upgrade advantages, use them. And vice versa. When, uh, I believe it was... Blue got their upgrade advantages, uh, upgrades to plus one, plus two. I might have. Mm, I'm a little off today. I'm sorry. Point being is, is like make sure that you stay on top of your upgrades because your opponent gets them and they make it so each one of their units are more valuable. It's like, why do you get plus one, plus one on Banes? Because two Banes with plus one, plus one kill Orker versus if three Banes if you don't have it. That kind of concept. That's why you go three, three uh, when your opponent's on two, two or whatever. Um, which is a calculated intentional decision for balancing in the game. So knowing with, uh, for example, a stalker um, dies to two liberator shots if there's a plus two attack on a liberator is super important to understand and know. It's like one of the biggest threshold changes in a game with regards to content uh, or uh, uh, the, the combat between units. And so you kind of need to be aware of the same things in Zerg versus Zerg. Um, TVT, PVP, uh, and of course the matchups, those each one matter, uh, goes up against all nine matchups, depending on if you play random. And if you don't, of course, you need all three matchups. You need to know those specific upgrade advantages. Um, and it is all about those Banes and, uh, with the Zerg. Um, Banes and Lings, the upgrade attack is super important to know, and armor is super important to know. Uh, Ravengers and, um, having that plus one armor and plus one missiles, that kind of timing. 2-2 two, two is significantly more powerful than plus one, plus one. Just hits really hard. Um, also transitioning and how do you handle your opponent and make it so you have advantages like going Muta. I called out, hey, you got all these resources. Why aren't you going Muta? It'd be really easy to just throw it on that spire. You were out of uh, Larva and you could have done something there. So that would be the bad is... You didn't look at all your outs. You kind of just said, let's go Roach, Roach Ravenger, and this is what I'm going to do, which is okay. If you're following a build order, it's cool to do that. Um, as for uh, blue, don't BM. That's the bad. Just don't do that. Uh, your your expansions were a little bit tiny slow, um, but it's okay because you balance that with upgrades and getting into combat and being cognizant of your opponent's position and taking advantage when you could. So uh, either way, um, or rather, not either way. Regardless, good games to both of you. That was a really entertaining uh, ZVZ match. Um, and I look forward to seeing something else uh, come out of y'all. And I hope you have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. See you next time.